Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with me, Jess Gatleo. I'm so glad to have you guys here. It's a new video, it's a new day. We're foaming again, you know, it is what it is. Uh, if you're subscribed to the channel, that is great. And if you're not, it is free. It's free 99. So please do me a big, big, big favor and subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you here. We are on the road to 30,000. I was almost gonna say 20,000. <laughs> 30,000 subscribers and I'm so so excited because there's some exciting things coming that's all I'm gonna say that's all I'm gonna say um, but I'm so glad to have you here thank you so much for being here subscribe to the channel and also click the notification bell to know each and every single time I upload but before we get into this video I really do want to thank all of you for being here I do appreciate all the likes all the comments I really do want to thank you for all the effort that you put into being in the space and on this channel and sharing also the JK space with me for all the members I do appreciate it so much so let's get into the video okay so to make a long story short this is going to be just a mental health check-in because I haven't done a mental health video in my main space in a long time everybody who is in the membership space knows exactly what has happened since I've been away since I came back been at the facility exactly what happened there uh, my relationships with my family members in and during that time and after that time and also just generally how it's treated me in that period but I I haven't really I don't quite recall having a discussion or having a conversation with you guys being here in the main space about um, where I have been mentally since I've been back. And I really wanted to have this conversation with you because it is really a very important part of my channel. Mental health is a very, very important part of my channel. And I wanted us to have that conversation just so that you guys know where I'm at, what's going on now, how I'm feeling, how the medication is working and all of that. So I really do want to thank you guys. Let's get into this part of the video. It's really not not going to be a long video it is just a mental health check-in and yeah let's get into so it so the reason why i wanted to do this video is really simple i went to an event i felt very anxious i came back i was in a state and i didn't quite know what was going on because i hadn't felt that way in a really really long time given that when i went away that time prior to going away i was feeling this a lot I was feeling it a lot and what I'm talking about particularly if you do not watch my vlogs is I'm talking mostly about the social anxiety that I experienced when I went to the Berkeley house event and I will put it in the cards somewhere here I think it's on this side. vlog that was a very emotional vlog for me to film and I didn't realize how emotional that I would actually really get and it was rather difficult for me to film that particular portion of the vlog because I wasn't quite sure what I was feeling. Um, so I will be filming a video on social anxiety and dealing with social anxiety just, just as an introvert or even an extrovert, but I wanted you guys to know where I'm at mentally since I've been back. And <laughs> I cannot tell you, I... I haven't felt as great as I do for a very very long time and it could be largely because of the medication that I'm on it could be largely because of you know just the choices that I have made since coming back from the facility but I have been in a really really good place and the reason why I want to have this chat is because I get a lot of DMs currently at this time about oh where did you go which facility did you go to hey cat i've got a sister that you know we want to do this for her and we want to you know take her to a facility and this and that and the other or i'm thinking of doing this would you please share which facility you've been to so that maybe i can try that particular one out and this was really hard for me to answer. The reason being is because this is a very personal part of my life. I don't share the facility, not because I'm being snacks or funny or because I don't want to, 
you know, I'm being holier than thou or anything like that. The only reason why I did not share which facility I went to is because it's, it's really as simple as saying it's a very private part of my life. I don't necessarily want to share where I was at, but also it's a money thing. It's a medical aid thing, like a lot of money is taken from your medical aid when you go to facilities like this. This facility allows medical aid and it allows just you can come in if you're not on medical aid, but it's going to be an arm and a leg when you go in there. And the reason why I didn't want to share that is because I want people to feel comfortable to go to where they want to go. There are certain facilities that deal with, you know, addiction. There are certain facilities that deal with trauma. There are certain facilities that deal with all of it, certain aspects, different aspects of mental health. But I didn't want to share where I was at because it is a very personal part of my life. And I don't feel like there's already so much that I share um, on the net and online that I do want to keep certain parts of my personal life to myself. And I was hoping that... And I do also believe that a lot of you guys actually understand that. That is a very, very personal part of my life. And I don't, I don't want to share where I'm currently schooling. Like that's another thing that I get quite a lot is that where, which school are you going to, to study to be a life coach and all of that. I don't want to share that because there are people online that don't necessarily want the best for you. There are people online that want to find out very sensitive information about you that could make calls, that could speak to people, that could want to find out what happened when I was there, what medication I'm on. People have connections, bro. And it's one of the biggest reasons why I don't share where I was at. Um, and I just wanted to make that little disclaimer because I get so many of those messages like, where did you go? I really want to go there and all of that. And I, I personally just don't want to share that. And I hope that, um, you know, all the people who watch that can respect that. Moving on. I am in a very, very good place. I learned a lot about being diagnosed as clinically depressed. I learned a lot about zones that a person goes through when they are going through different and difficult parts of their lives. You can have a really good day, you're in a green zone. You can re have a really bad day, you're in a red zone. And when I was away, these are things that I learned about myself that I can easily now pinpoint that I'm having a very green day. I'm having a very yellow day. I'm having a very red day. You know what I'm saying? So now I know how to pinpoint them and I know how to handle them going forward. Being clinically diagnosed with depression was hard for me. Initially, I couldn't even say it out loud. I couldn't even say that I'm a depressed individual. And it's funny because a lot of the time I also get things like, oh, how can you be depressed? You seem so energetic and bubbly and this and this and this. I just choose not to film the days when I'm really not in the mood to film. The days where it's dark and it's cloudy and I can't, I can't, I can't function. It's really, really difficult. But the good news is those days are very, very few and far between because I have done the work, I've done the exercises, I have done the therapy sessions and continue to do the therapy sessions that help me um, stabilize my day-to-day -day life, stabilize my emotions. Um, being clinically diagnosed with depression, I feel like people use the words depression and anxiety so freely, so easily, like, oh no, I'm just feeling very depressed today. Um, and I get, I get with anxiety that people can say I'm feeling very anxious. It is a very normal emotion to feel, to feel very anxious because you're going to a function, to feel very anxious because you're going to have a very difficult conversation with your partner or your family or your father, sister, cousins, whatever it is. That I get, but with a, a struggle, I don't like to say illness, I don't like to say issue, but with a struggle like depression, I feel like 
people who say that oh i'm feeling very depressed today oh my depression is hitting oh my depression is on an all-time high today when they necessarily haven't been diagnosed with depression is a little bit slightly um slightly insulting to people who have been diagnosed because it's not just having a bad day it's not just having a sad day it's a clinical mental imbalance a chemical imbalance that is happening in your head in your brain that you cannot control and a good example of that is in that vlog when i was going through what i was going through i had an imbalance in my brain at the time that i couldn't control even with the medication that i was on and that helped me understand that so this is what it feels like not being in control not knowing why you are feeling the way you are feeling because i mean my day started off fantastic my day started off so well but why am i feeling this way i can't control it i can't get a handle on it and sometimes most of the time the meds work most of the time the meds come through for you sometimes they don't sometimes what you are feeling is so overwhelming that it overtakes every single thing that is happening in that time and in that moment and that's what made me understand what it is when it comes to being clinically depressed i have good days right today is an okay day it's not a good day it's not a great day it's not a fantastic day it's not a bad day either it's an okay day and then i have great days and then i have bad days but since coming back from where i went i've been having mostly good or okay days and for a long period of time i mean that was in may right so for a long period of time i didn't feel all those difficult emotions that i felt before going in before going away i didn't feel it i didn't i didn't sulk away i didn't close myself off to the world i didn't want to get up in the morning i didn't feel like my whole world was black and i and, and i just didn't know how to make a step forward i mean i felt all those things right when i had gone away when i came back those emotions were really few and far between right so when i went away i felt the darkness i felt and 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 it encompassed each and every single part of me i don't want to cry this is upsetting and it's really hard to speak about things like this because i don't speak about them as much anymore that's why i reserve those kinds of videos for my membership space before i went away it was dark i didn't want to be around people i didn't want to engage with people i didn't I just didn't want to engage with the world. I didn't want to be present. I wanted to dwell in the darkness that was my life at that time, in the struggles that I was going through emotionally, financially, mentally, all of that. I allowed myself to sink into the space. So most days were darker than others. But when I came back, having learned everything that i learned having learned all the the tools that can equip me to work around the emotions that i'm feeling or the zones that i'm in having learned all of that has lightened my days so so much but not because I learned the tools not only because I learned the tools but because I started confronting things that I didn't want to confront. I started confronting all the traumas of my youth, of my childhood, all the traumas that I experienced with my parents, with my siblings. The trauma of being a golden child and being you know having people look at you and expecting the best from you and expecting you to be this A student expecting you to be this perfect child who always listens to their parents expecting you to do what is required of you even if it is against what you want or believe or what you want to do i go i went through all of that and 
therapy, I almost said surgery, <laughs> therapy taught me to confront all of those things. And I confront them every single month. And I confront them every single day, even after having been away. Those things are still there, but I have learned and speak through with my therapist, talk through with my therapist, all those things that help me better navigate my day-to-day -day life. And of course, the medication also comes in very, very handy at this point. So being back and knowing that I am a clinically depressed person and I've been diagnosed, I know that it's, it's hard, but it's doable, but it's manageable. Um, I have control now. I'm not saying I have control of my emotions and I can stop feeling anxious and I can stop feeling depressed and I can stop it. I can't stop it. And my Berkeley House vlog shows that very well. A keenly, you know, it shows it so, so well. I can't stop it, but I know exactly what to do to calm me. I have the medications to calm me. I have the medications to, you know, say, okay, 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 we know you're coming up, we know you're coming up, but, you know, they bring me down quite a lot, and in that time, while the meds are doing their things, for in here, I'm also doing their th the things for me, executing the self-care, the love, the treating myself with kindness, the being gentle with myself, the allowing myself to be in that moment, in that time, but not allowing myself to sink further in as I typically would if I, before I went away. So right now, the place that I'm in right now is a good one. I have a good relationship with my family members. Um, some, not so much. But being away has also helped me realize that I, I can't please everybody. And I can't control how people see me. I can only control how I react to a certain situation. I can control being present in the moment. If the person that I'm dealing with in that time, in that point, in that space doesn't want to be present with me, I cannot control that. If that person wants to walk away from me and walk away from the relationship we have, I cannot control that. That is their choice. I chose to stick around, fight. I chose to expose myself in the sense of, of literally just burying myself down to the bone to try and show whoever it is that I'm dealing with that this is what it is. This is how I feel. This is what I'd like us to work on. And if they don't want to come to the party, I can't control that. And being away helped me um, realize that I need to put myself first as well. Uh, for my whole entire life, I've been putting others before me. I put my family members before me. I make decisions around uh, my family, my friends, my relationship, all of that. And... Um, when I was in therapy with my therapist, I learned all these things, that this is what I was actually doing. This is how much damage the, this conversation with my mother did to me. This is how much damage that this conversation or this action from my father and, and my mother did to me. This is how much damage this interaction with my sister did to me, my brothers did to me. And this is how I can work on it. Does it make it any easier? No. But the only difference now is I'm equipped to be present and be in the forefront. And of course, the meds also play a very, very big part. On quite a number of meds for very different reasons. I don't take all of them each day. No. I take one daily without a shadow of a doubt. And then when I have moments where I feel like I'm peaking, when I have moments where I feel like I'm struggling to sleep again, where I have moments where I feel like then I take the others. But there are two that I have to take daily without... You must take them. 
you must take them so that in here everything is all right um and those i i do not make any mistake i'm i take them and if there's one thing i'm gonna leave you with because that's that's where i'm at i'm in a really really good place um you know everything is is good everything seems to be picking up um my relationships with my family members great my relationship my personal relationship with mr diesel great um my relationships with my fam my friends great i really feel like i'm in a good place the other things that are stressful for me that i'm not going to share on here am i working on that absolutely is it a day to day to day thing do i have a choice no I just have to be present for it. I just have to work on it and choose myself each and every day. And I'm doing just that. So if there's one thing that I'm going to leave you with here now is that choose yourself. And if you feel like that is a path that you want to take, you need to work on yourself for yourself and you're in a position where you can just take some time off and go somewhere where you can speak to someone every day and do this and learn things about how to manage your mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit. Do that. Do that. I highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. But yeah, that's just my uh, mental health check-in since I've been back. Uh, the people who are in my membership space know about all of it. They know the detail. They know what happened before I went in, when I was in there, what happened, when I came back, what happened. So if you want to see or have access to all of that, you can become a member on my space. Um, thank you so much for continuing to follow this channel that is just truly authentically me just the homebody, just an introvert who's always at home <laughs> um, for choosing me each and every single time you click on subscribing and click on liking and clicking the bell and putting down a comment and DMing me and all of that. That's you choosing me and I'm really, really thankful. And you choose me even on my dark days, even on my mental health heavy days. And I want to thank you for that. So, but right I'm good. I'm good. And I hope you are too. And if you're not, you know, I'm always here. DM me if you want to, if you feel comfortable. Um, we can have a chat. But yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.